Hi y'all. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about Donald Trump and the media. But before I get into the meat of the argument, I just want to put out there uh, a defensive response to an accusation that will come my way, and has indeed come my way, about my being, in some sense, a, sh uh, a shill for Donald Trump, or, you know, on the Trump train, or whatever it is. Uh, this isn't true. Now, when I made videos defending Hillary Clinton, uh, defending President Obama, uh, talking about the Republicans, uh, the poor decisions they were making in the Senate, uh, these people weren't coming by and saying, oh, you know, you're pro-Hillary, you're pro-Obama. Uh, even though some people did say it, uh, there's not a lot of overlap between the people who are accusing me of being in the bag for her, who are now accusing me of being in the bag for Donald Trump. Neither is the case. Uh, it's just simply that I know a little bit about, about uh, a little bit about the law. I've read a few of them. I've read the Constitution, and there are certain prerogatives that go with various offices, which are inherent to that office and can be used in, in a, a host of different ways, all of which are lawful. So, um, Donald Trump is claimed to be a threat to the media. They, you hear this all the time. Jim Acosta's recent uh, drama it has, you know, rekindled this kind of argument that he is, uh, he being Donald Trump, is, is a threat to the First Amendment. He's a, fret, a threat to you know, free press. It's all bullshit. This president is not a threat uh, to the free press in any sense at all. Now, the same people who are claiming, oh, we're being, the media is being victimized now, that part of the media establishment, uh, with the addition, in this case, of Fox News, who isn't uh, usually on the, uh, the argument I'm talking about in a moment, uh, they're not on the same side. Uh, cast aside for a moment thoughts about the First Amendment, uh, free speech rights, and, and think in, instead about religious liberty and how they get up in arms, the media minus Fox News, and uh, get up in, we're up in arms about a uh, corporation having, you know, religious liberty to decline to provide what they thought were abortifacients to uh, declining to pay for those for some of their employees while covering 20, I think, uh, is either 16 or 20 other forms of birth control. Um, they, they, they think this is somehow, that this is improper that the first, the, you know, the, uh, the religious liberty in this country should excuse any religious exercise from ordinary law. Well, that's not, our, that's not our system, it's not our tradition, and it's not our law. There are certain exceptions that are made to laws that benefit religions that other people can't take, uh, can't take advantage of because it's not a religious issue for them. Uh, this includes things uh, up to including importing uh, hallucinogenic drugs that would otherwise be illegal to uh, use, um, and things of that nature. Um, but we also do that for the media. They get, they get certain exemptions from normal laws that don't apply to the general public. And uh, to give you an example, I've talked about this before, uh, to give you an example, um, the uh, Solicitor General at the time was Paul Clement, and he was arguing in the Supreme Court uh, in favor of up upholding the constitutionality of a, a child pornography statute. It was the particular, I don't remember the particular details, it was on, uh, I think this was, anyway, it doesn't particularly matter uh, which case that was. The, the point of it is, is that while he is arguing uh, about why this law was within Congress's power to enact, Justice Stevens posed to him, posed to him a question. And he says, this is about simple possession. Um, uh, the, the law you know, prohibits anyone from possessing, distributing, soliciting, you know, selling that uh, child pornography. And Justice Stevens asked him a very good question. Suppose there is a reporter who's covering our troops, or uh, coalition troops over in Iraq or Afghanistan, or who, who knows where, and they happen to record on film graphic representations of our soldiers raping school children in a country where we occupy, and they bring that material back to the United States. Are they guilty of, uh, are they guilty, can they be prosecuted under your view of the statute? And uh, Paul Clement who's not normally thrown by questions, he, he, it threw him off a little bit. And he says, well, it would depend on how graphic it is. And Justice Stevens, who's not normally thrown off either, I you know, have this like, um, he's like, counsel, it's soldiers raping school children on camera. It's going to be, you know, graphic. What happens then? And then Paul Clement finally says, well, you know, they'd probably have an as-applied challenge. That is, 
uh, because of the First Amendment, even possession of child pornography, in some cases for journalists, is protected is a protected activity by the Constitution. Uh, so you know that's a concession by the Solicitor General of the United States that there would be or could be in such an instance an exemption to the possession, uh, transportation, importation of child pornography statutes. That's how seriously we take it. So too is that uh, true um, uh, uh, you know, about a whole host of other lesser important laws, and. Let's talk about Jim Acosta's um, hissy fit in the press conference room, you know, the White House press room or whatever the hell they call it, when he would not uh, surrender the microphone when the president was finished talking to him. Now, in the, the case that went before the court, the lawyer who came from the Department of Justice to represent the United States, to represent the president's office, was terrible. I mean, really, this guy should be fired, probably disbarred, he's incompetent. The greatest piece of evidence about what happened in there is what was caught on video. And he says, oh, we don't rely on what was caught on the video at all. Why would you not rely on what's caught on in, uh, what's depicted in that video? It shows an accurate representation of the events as they unfurled. Now, I've watched uh, all the news stations, or not all of them, but many of them, from Fox News to One American News, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, you know, right on down the line. And not a single one of the legal analysts they called, not a single one of the experts they called, not a single person they had that I can find or that I saw got on there and pointed out the fact that Jim Acosta committed two criminal offenses within seconds of each other. Now they want to talk about assault. These lawyers, um, I'm glad they're not prosecuted. This is why we send out the cops to do investigations, not, not the lawyers, because you know they spend more time with these types of things and, and they think I think a little bit better than the lawyers do, but in any event, um, in the 1990s there was a, there was a re revision to a statute uh, that protected federal agents, and now it protects all federal officers, all federal employees, and it uh, it was an assault statute primarily for the protection of uh, law enforcement officials. That was generalized, and now it applies to pretty much every executive, uh, every official in, in the government. <clears throat> So when you watch the video, two things happen. Uh, Acosta asks his questions. The president's done talking to him. Uh, he you know, gives the microphone to someone else. And the staffer, whoever this woman is, walks over to try to take it away. So if everyone remembers the events, those are it. The moment that the president asked Mr. Acosta to relinquish the microphone, and he refused, that in itself was a crime. Not because the president was asking, uh, was giving an order or something simply because of another statute that governs, uh, well, I'll, I'll read it to you, it's 18 U United States Code Section 641. Who, whoever embezzles, steals, purloins, or knowingly converts to his use or the use of another without authority, or without authority, sells, conveys, or disposes of any record, voucher, money, or thing of value of the United States, or of any department or agency thereof, or any property made or being made under contract of the United States, blah, blah, blah. So the relevant part here is whoever embezzles, steals, purloins, or knowingly converts to his use any record, voucher, money, or thing of value. The microphone is property of the United States government. His not relinquishing, you know, it was handed to him on loan, like a rental car is, uh, and he has not returned it when he is when the demand for the return has been made. So he is still possessing it without authority, and then he is now using it to his own advantage. That's a conversion of property. That's a crime. No one seems to have mentioned this. The lawyer at the Department of Justice, such as I can tell, didn't point out to the judge, well, a good reason to justify excluding him is that he is now committing criminal offenses inside the White House, and we're not going to tolerate uh, criminals inside the White House, unless they happen to be the president, apparently. <laughs> and that's not just, that's not a dig at, at Trump. I mean, we've, not all of our presidents have behaved lawfully. So in any event, so there's that. Now, the 18 United States Code 111 bit that I read to you, uh, uh, mentioned to you about the assault thing actually has it covers more than just assault here's what it says uh, any person who forcibly assaults resists opposes impedes intimidates or interferes with any person designated in section uh, 1114 of this title while engaged in or on account of the performance of official duties and you go check out the section of references and it says whoever kills or attempts to kill any agency officer or employee of the United States or of any agency in any branch of the United States government including any member of the uniform services, while such officer or employee is engaged in or on account of the performance of official duties, or any person assisting 
such an officer or employee in their performance of such duties or on account of the assistance shall be punished. So even if that intern is not an employee, or is not an official, I don't, I don't know if it's an intern, I don't know if it's a staffer, whether or not it's an employee depends on whether or not it's a student uh, you know, filling some position or an intern of some type. Uh, I don't know whether the person's paid, so I don't know whether they would fall uh, be categorized as, um, as an employee. But one thing I do know for certain is that uh, that person's job is to do what the president asks with respect to moving the microphone around. That was that, was that person's uh, you know, job. That's what the president has asked that person to do. He's doing, doing it on the behalf of, uh, at the behest of the president and is carrying out those duties. And that squarely fits in with any person assisting such an officer or employee, in this case, uh, for purposes here, uh, the uh, president is an officer. Even though, interestingly enough, uh, by constitutional law, the president is not an officer of the United States. Uh, but this isn't a constitutional matter. This is a statutory matter. We have just baked into the system. I'm not saying Jim Acosta should actually be arrested and prosecuted, but he should. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I'm just pointing out that if you went there and you did that and you weren't Jim Acosta or some media, you know, some uh, infotain or some journalist, you would, you would be liable to prosecution for those two offenses. Uh, putting your hands on any federal employee or a person assisting a federal employee who, uh, you know, is carrying out a lawful function you better believe you're going to get, you know, you're going to the who's uh, About the conversion thing, I doubt that would be prosecuted, but I've seen, I've seen sillier prosecutions uh, for pettier things that have succeeded. You know, I, I saw a case about involving some lipstick. Anyway, it's stupid. These things do happen. But they're not going to happen to a journalist because we have that background built in. We're going to be extra protective of journalists, even though the law doesn't actually require us to tolerate they're committing certain offenses, though it would require us to tolerate they're committing others. Like the, if they happen to record soldiers raping people, uh, if there's any law that says they can't record that, or they can't hold that onto that material, and they can't get it back to their uh, news desk, and they can't, you know, any law that interferes with that clearly has to fall. That is precisely why the First Amendment is there. And so that way, when there is, that's the hope anyway, when there's government misconduct, some pioneering, industrious little reporter somewhere will catch wind of it and do their duty to investigate it. But that isn't this case. His illegal conduct has nothing at all to do with the free press. It's just his wanting to grandstand and in the process committing two crimes. <clears throat> but we, we bake in this protection and the media has become, uh, they realize, well I don't know if they consciously realize, but they have been so entitled to certain uh, excesses we don't give to anyone else that <clears throat> they start to confuse what we do as a matter of courtesy to make it clear that we really do uh, want to make uh, certain they're not pressured. Uh, they, they get used to that and, and they confuse that, that courtesy with some kind of legal entitlement. Now, if you don't think the legal entitlement bit is a, is a good argument, you should go uh, to the court case where uh, Jim Acosta, the CNN people's lawyer, was there. Their claim was that the president cannot uh, remove a journalist from uh, the grounds for among other reasons, because the White House is Jim Acosta's office. CNN is claiming they, uh, Jim Acosta's office is the White House, that he has a legal entitlement to be there. Uh, and it, 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 that depends in no way on the consent of the government officials. They are required to let Jim Acosta in to his office. That was one of their, it's not a good argument, by the way. Now. Uh, it's interesting that the court did not decide this on First Amendment grounds, which is quite proper because there's no First Amendment argument here in Jim Acosta's favor at all. Uh, he did it on Fifth Amendment grounds. They didn't give him a, a fair process. And that's why I made a little joke earlier about the prosecution. Uh, a fair process would be to arrest Jim Acosta for committing two crimes in the presence of the president in this, the White House of the United States and, uh, and then, well, he won't be allowed to be in because, you know, that whole crime thing. Uh, but the White House has decided to capitulate, so as, you know, not to do this. I don't know why they wouldn't, because it would be uh, a perfectly clear way to point out the, that the media, for whatever uh, your job is as a journalist, even the pretend journalists like Jim Acosta, uh, it does not give you carte blanche to go around violating any law that you think would be inconvenient if followed. Uh, so instead, they set up these rules that if the journalists break them, they'll get a hearing in the White House. And 
a warning and then they'll be removed, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. Kick him the fuck out. The Fifth Amendment argument that the court used to say that the White House has to give him back his hard pass, which uh, is not a correct statement of the law um, anyway, but even assuming uh, that the judge incorrectly applied something or whatever, the president should simply refuse. No, actually, no one, not a single non-government person, has an entitlement to be in the White House. There's no such right that exists for anyone. Period. <clears throat> um, so anyway, uh, he should have said, I think, I thank the court for your advisory opinion. I thought you didn't give advisory opinions. Since it is an advisory opinion, or I'm taking it as an advisory opinion, uh, your so-called order can get stuffed. And if you want to win, impeach and convict me. That, those are your options. I'm not going to obey uh, you, this black-hooded, uh, black-robed goon. But anyway, the, uh, the judge who uh, issued the order was following circuit precedent, which, is a, which itself is an incorrect statement of the law. The Fifth Amendment says, you know, life, liberty, property. Uh, certainly, no one's arguing that anyone's life is at stake here, so you know, Jim Acosta is not going to be you know, killed. Um, so that's off the table. Uh, certainly, I don't know of any notion of liberty that grants anyone the right to walk into government buildings just any old time they want and do any old thing they want. Uh, so it has to be a property interest. But he has, no, he has no cognizable property interest in the grounds of the White House. He doesn't own it. It's not his office, despite CNN's claims. And the hard pass is not his. It's property of the United States government. Anyway, so the, the president should have just said no, get stuffed. But this notion that this president, uh, because he's hostile to individual members of the press and some networks, thereby is doing something to injure the First Amendment is bullshit. These people have been put up on a pedestal for years. Now, there's always, even, there's always been an adversarial relationship between administrations and the media at some level. But this is, you know, I think everyone can tell that this is a little bit personal on both sides. Uh, but the fact that, as a matter of courtesy, uh, we have given, we've been so deferential to the media, uh, the government officials have been so deferential to the media, doesn't actually mean that any of these extra things that are being done for nicety's sake or an entitlement of theirs, they're done as a courtesy. So long as you behave professionally, competently, blah, 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 you know, we'll perfectly happy to be courteous with you. But because you guys want to make this personal and you want to engage in these kinds of tactics, uh, no courtesies. You get the you get only what the First Amendment itself directly requires, and that's it. Uh, and no one can honestly say that giving the media exactly what the Constitution provides them and not an inch more is an infringement on the First Amendment because it fully respects precisely everything that the amendment actually covers. It just doesn't give them any bells and whistles. They're complaining about bells and whistles. Delusionally so, I have to add. All right, with that, I will uh, end the video here. You have a great day.